So that's the, the two wheel drive steering rack, the, um, the radius arm cross member and the lower arm cross member all removed from the van. No going back now. Right, so the radius arm bracket at the front had to come off. Um, I've, basically what I've done is I've cut that down flush. Uh, this, this, is, this insert here is part of the original bracket that came out of there. Um, and I've just basically cut that and I've cut it and ground it flush with that. Um, and what I'm going to do, as I mentioned earlier on, is I, I've got a, I'm going to get a, a 30, um, 300 mil piece of plate. That's exactly 300 mil across there to that cut there. 300 mil by 105 mil, which which matches matches the width of this plate here. A little bit of um, synchro trivia: this this plate here is actually part of an insert exactly the same as in, in, inside this gap here um, on a two-wheel drive one basically what you've got is the 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 radius arm bracket that goes across the, the both sides of the car that slides up in there and is, is spot welded spot welded into along here um, and holds a whole lot in place on the synchro yeah, obviously that's not needed because uh, the radius arms attached to the subframe so what they've done is they've made a like a like a that sort of shape bracket that pushes up inside there and again is is, is you can see on that one there is spot welded along there uh, and and that takes um that, that's got the drillings for the for the um for the subframe i i i was thinking about for one mad moment or several mad moments i was thinking about trying to take this out of the um of the old chassis and uh, and fit it into into mine but i haven't got the time to be doing that so i'm going to do what everyone else does Quite rightly, I'm just gonna I'm gonna get a piece of plate and I'm gonna I'm gonna weld it across there, and then drill the um, drill the holes for the subframe in there. I've got really time to be doing doing stuff like that. I'd like to it'd, like, it'd be nice to do it and take it off and make it as, as synchro as possible, but I, I don't have the time or the energy at the moment. Right then, next um, let's have a look at where I've cut the the two wheel drive. Steering rack mount that uh, that that goes to there. That's it's still going to get further trimming along here soon to make it fit the um, fit up with the 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 synchro rack mount uh, and and the clean up so I can weld do make the welds and it's probably going to get one bolt there and one up there as well just to hold the rack in the rack mount in place while whilst I weld it and I'm happy with it um, as well as clamping uh, here is where the um, the lower arm was a substantial bit of kit went across across the car there and the lower arm was bolted up underneath here so I've, I've, I've flushed that down uh, cut that down and I've also I've also shaped it exactly the same as the um, as the synchro one the synchro ones is, is slightly different um, it's not there's not a hole there for that and, and that lip faces forwards but other than that um, it's much the same as that uh, right that hole there I've just carved out with my trusty Dremel and that is for and that's for this bar this bar is what pushes in through underneath the chassis in through the chassis roll through that hole uh, and you can see there's two threaded holes there in in that bar and and that they take the they take the the bolts for the subframe at the back here's what i'm talking about with that with that threaded bar basically that bar pushes in this is the obviously the donor vehicle there's the there's, there's the original little hole there where the bar pushed up through um and and so the the bar comes up through there and um gives you a threaded threaded portion on either side either of those holes to mount the to mount the rear end of the the um the subframe so i've just given the steering rack mount a uh, light blast over to get any crud off of it um, any rust loose rust and loose uh, paint as well loose paint um, yeah I'm gonna I'll treat any bits of rust and, and, and paint it up uh, what I'm going to the way I'm gonna fit it um, is I'm gonna stick a couple of bolts in each end I know some people just bolt these up um, I'm gonna bolt and weld this um, I'll put a couple of bolts in to um, to position it on the uh, on the van and then I'm going to weld it in as well 
um, around the tops, all around the corners, and around the edges, and I'll probably drill some holes in, in where it goes as well. Do some spot welds too. So try and get as uh, get as um, strong a fixing as possible. Uh, the bolts, are, I'll, I'll leave the bolts in there, but um, but they're just really for location as well as um, using clamps to get it up into place. So I'm just going to get this ready now um, and then start preparing the area on the car as well, on the side of the car, on the van where this has got to go and um, it took me a couple of days I think to get this sorted because obviously this is pretty important, I've got to do this right. So I'm pretty pleased really because um, apart from surface rust it's actually not that bad condition really. Right then that's the um, power steering rack mount bolted and welded into place there's only one bolt welding it in that i used to line it up the rest of it's been it's been welded in all around the edges and a few spot welds as well here's a view from the back uh, i suppose my welding's going to win any beauty awards but it's got good penetration um i'm happy with that yeah took a bit of um took a bit of time to get it right make sure i offered it up right um, but now I'm really pleased that that's done and that's on. I think uh, the next job now is probably um, is the uh, the corners of the each battery box. So that's both of the battery boxes now had the corners squared off. Uh, what I've done with them, I've kept them quite modest as as as, as it goes. Really, I haven't they're probably not as big as the ones that are on the do on the donor vehicle. Mainly because um, I use both of these these boxes. Um, they've both got batteries in, big batteries as well. Uh, a couple of 75 amp hours that are being connected up in um, in parallel. So they both um, they both only just about fit in those battery boxes. So to go any bigger might cause me some problems, but they're fine as they are. Um, I've been using um, big wheels anyway, and I've never had any problems with the two wheel two wheel drive setup and configuration, which is a lot lower. Um, they've never touched so anyway so that's them done now so most of the front end of um, mods are all done now you can uh, obviously like I said before I've welded in the power steering rack mount all I'm really waiting to do now is just to plate these over um, but I'm uh, I'm waiting for some metal that I've ordered up to be delivered so it's kind of a pain in the ass at the moment can't get that finished but still plenty of other stuff to do well, as you can see from what I've done um, already is I've yesterday I, I gave it a blow over in shuts all across the underneath now so that's all protected They're all looking shuts tastic you can see there actually you can see where I've um, I've got those um, how I've joined those two batteries up did that a while ago I had to take the two-wheel drive tank out to do that so yeah everything's all um, all in place Apart from those plates, plenty of other things to do though. Um, while I'm here, I'll start. Um, I'll start putting in the coolant lines, accelerator cable, um, additional wiring looms for the diff diff locks and, and whatever else that goes to the back, and some other stuff that I've got to put in for the. Got to run a line for the um, for the VSS signal for the Subaru mower up to the front uh, where I've got a, a reader for the um, for the vehicle speed signal from um, it comes out the back of the uh, uh, comes out the back of the um, speedo you can see how cold it is that's not smoke that's my breath um, yeah so yeah loads to do I haven't put a great deal of shuts around this area because I'm um, I'm probably going to revisit that in the future. Well, I will, because um, uh, I'm going to add the 16-inch uh, the strengthening uh, to the to the strut to the strut mount or this bit here, along here, and these plates that go across there as well. I might even delete this hole and weld it up as well if I don't use that. Um, but that's going to be a separate uh, separate side project, a bolt-on project because um, I um. I still um, haven't been able to get that stuff off of the uh, the donor vehicle. It's going to take a long time. It's going to be a separate project, as I say. So anyway, there's lots of other stuff to do, which is just as well, really, because I need to keep warm because it's bloody freezing in here.
Talk to you later. Well, while I've been waiting for those parts to arrive to finish off the front, those plates of metal, uh, I've got on with the, the fuel pump. The fuel pump, I, I've actually decided now and managed to get it into the um, the stock stock position hanging off of the um, uh, the uh, off the bottom of the left tank strap. It probably just drops down about half inch more than the standard one, so it's not it's not it's not particularly hanging out vulnerable in the way. So that's I'm pretty pleased with that. Uh, right, um, as you can see, I've put the fuel filter above the um, uh, the top of the gearbox there, um, next to the the cross member attached to the floor. I don't. I didn't want it in the engine bay. Uh, it's just. It's. It's, it's going to clutter things up too much. I want a, as least at least amount of extra stuff in the engine bay as possible. Really, uh, it's easy enough to service it there as well. So because it is a service item. Um, okay. So from there that goes. The cable's clipped up to the to the floor and goes through through that aperture there, through to the uh, through to the engine bay. I've also sleeved it with some it's with electrical conduit at the moment, which still does the same job really, um, just to stop it from rubbing on anything. Because this uh, that that braided that braided um, uh, hose can 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 really uh, chafe through things if it uh, if it gets the chance. So yeah, that's that. Then the feed comes up up through here, um, connects onto the uh, to the inlet there. Then the the return hose comes down and. That connects up to, well, that transitions onto a, a low pressure hose, push fit hose. This has got to be fixed up. Yeah, I've just got this up here for, for, for leak testing, just checking it all. But that'll go. That'll be clipped to the firewall down the bottom there. So I suppose um, let me let me show you with the um the fuel pump running. There you go. The fuel pump is running. You can probably hear it. Uh, fuel bar pressure is just short of three bar at the moment. Fuel rail pressure, should I say, it's just short of three bar. Um, no leaks I left. I had this running for a good 10-15 minutes continuous last night. Looked all around it. It's all it's all um it's all gas tight, it's all um holding holding pressure, not leaking anywhere up the top on any joints, unions or anywhere else. So that's just like I say, it just needs tidying up now on the firewall with them 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 cables. And um and that's that that in that install done there for that for the for that bit now. Also, while I've been waiting for the the parts to arrive, so I can finish off the the, the bottom of the the chassis at the front, oh, you can see I've been um, I've been installing all of the coolant lines all the way through, and also the the accelerator cable too. So they're all sorted, so all ready to go. I might actually fill them up with coolant later on today, just to check and make sure nothing's leaking. So I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, I've still got lots to do under here though. I've still got to do the sort out the the vacuum hosing because I've got to put the reservoir for the diff diff locks. Uh, that's got a mount underneath, and I've also got some additional some additional um, wiring looms to add along here as well. Again for the diff locks and the um, the sender for the um, for the fuel tank too, plus the vacuum lines for the diff locks as well. So still loads more to do. I can't get off my back yet. Uh, right, okay, that's about it really for the moment. I think um yeah, I'm just really waiting now for the um so the, for those plates of metal to arrive so that I can crack on now with the front and get the front subframe in. Yeah, in the meantime, I think I might fill her up with water. And these beauties have just arrived. <laughs> Just been back home. They they come in the post. These are um, three millimeter thick plates, mild steel, cut to the exact size that I needed to um, to fit underneath the chassis rails uh, where, where these bits here mount. So um, I'll get them done now. I think uh, next week because I'm gonna make sure I've got to get, make sure they go in the right place, drill all the holes cor correctly for the bolts, and weld them up nice and strong. So it's Friday afternoon now, so I think I'll leave that now until next week. And, um, and concentrate that on that on Monday now. Uh, okay, great. Um, more to come in the next videos. This one's getting a bit long now, so I'll I'll stop this video now, and um, and, and carry on next week with the with the front subframe uh, install, and probably the gear linkage as well. That's got to go in with uh, with loads of other things too. See you later.